Hey, brand builder, Rory Vaden here. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out this interview. As always, it's our honor to provide it to you for free. And wanted to let you know there's no big sales pitch or anything coming uh, at the end. However, if you are someone who is looking to build and monetize your personal brand, we would love to talk to you and get to know you a little bit and hear about some of your dreams and visions and share with you a little bit about what we're up to to see if we might be a fit. So if you're interested in a free strategy call with someone from our team, we would love to hear from you. You can do that at brandbuildersgroup.com slash podcall, brandbuildersgroup.com slash podcall. We hope to talk to you soon. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode on the Influential Personal Brand. Uh, today, I have a good friend and a BBG client as my special guest. Um, before I formally turn it over and let you guys uh, meet the one and only Jill Floodstrom, uh, let me give you just a little bit of her, uh, what I'm going to call her professional bio, um, and then I'll help fill in the gaps with all the things that are not on here, which should be, which I think uh, are a really impressive part of who Jill is and what she's done. But um, here are some things that might be relevant to you specifically if you are an entrepreneur or a small business owner, right? Uh, because Jill is a serial entrepreneur. She has created and built five separate businesses in three separate industries. Um, and so she is no stranger to jumping off the cliff without a parachute and trying to figure out how do we make this all work as she's flying down the mountain, uh, which I think is a unique component of deciding to take that leap and be an entrepreneur and build a small business. Um, but I would say when it comes to her personal brand, separate of all these businesses that she's created and runs, she really specializes in helping her clients mitigate feelings of overwhelm and chaos when it comes to growing their businesses. And as an entrepreneur and a small business owner, there is a lot of chaos and a lot of overwhelm. Um, and I also know that uh, Jill is not just passionate, but also just very skilled in efficiency and organization. And so she has really, uh, I would say, made that leap from not just entrepreneur and small business owner, but also a thriving personal brand. So uh, without further ado, welcome to the show, Jill. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, we are too. I love it when we get to feature um, our clients and you're not just a client, like you're one of like the OG clients. You've been a part of our community for three years. Uh, we're so honored and blessed to have get to be a small part of your journey and to see all the amazing stuff that you've built over the last three years. Uh, but I know all this but the people listening do not. So to help everyone get to know you a little bit, just tell us how you got to where you are. Uh, what are these businesses that you've been building? And tell us just a little bit about all the things that are Jill. They're, they are all so different. I, I think a lot of people probably try to create businesses within the same industry, not me. I'm just like, you know what? I want to try that. Let's go for it. But my career started in banking, which led to financial services because I used to work at the coroner's office. I used to meet a ton of people that were not prepared for retirement, not prepared for the bad things that can happen to us. And I just thought, you know what? There's got to be a better way. There's got to be people that we can talk to that really understand, you know, what's kind of working using my medical background too so it just kind of was a natural evolution and then with the way that the reform has come about with healthcare and financial services just thought you know what i need to create a personal brand something that i can control and it just kind of led to where we're at today and it's been a natural evolution and it's just it's been an awesome awesome journey Oh, I love that. And I love how you just so always casually mention this, this uh, brief stint of your life in the coroner's office in the morgue. I think it's so fascinating knowing you and you were like the most bubbly, bright, friendly person on the planet. Like how that ever worked. I don't know. Maybe it's like the perfect ju juxtaposition of roles and positions in that. Um, but so I, I want everyone to know, it's like kind of give like people like when you talk about building and scaling small businesses and all these different industries, it's like you have a real estate entity, you've got your financial services and insurance practice. I'm um, like, you're really all across the board. And so I'm curious for you, knowing that when it comes to like your personal brand and this personal passion of yours around organization and efficiency, it's like, 
like, how do you, like, I even know, like right now, as you sit right here, like you're sitting in Las Vegas, you do not live in Las Vegas, you live in Washington, but you're flipping a house for your real estate business. It's like, how do you keep all these different businesses like siloed and centered and organized and efficient and running all at the same time? Because that's a lot going on. It is. I always tell people, it's like kind of like a marathon. Like you have to make sure that all these businesses are running at the same pace as each other, which is kind of a juggling, you know, situation. But I think the most important thing is we try to complicate things so much as human beings and really just keeping things super simple mm. allows me to do all these different things and keeping these businesses running is quite the adventure, but keeping it simple has really, really helped me. Okay. So this is an amazing topic to talk about because I doesn't, I do not care what it is that you do. It's like, we do overcomplicate it. We, like we try to make it as complicated as possible, even if it's emotionally, it's like, it's not that big of a deal, but yet we build it up as some catastrophic event that's going to happen. Um, and so as an entrepreneur, small business owner, this thriving personal brand with this awesome reputation for doing great work, it's what are the things that you find other small business owners, entrepreneurs overcomplicate? And, and I want to know personally too, it's like, how would you help someone to simplify things? I think the first one, because we all are suffering from overwhelm in our email. Mm. And so I love to focus with my clients first on the email, like let's tame the email monster and then we can kind of move on to some other things. But there's a way that I organize my inboxes within my email inbox, which makes it so much easier to just manage that flow of emails because I think there's so many more people that are just, they look at their inbox and they're like, I'm not even going to deal with it today. I'm just going to set it aside. And if somebody really needs me, they'll email me again and it'll move to the top of the stack. Because I used to be one of those people that when you would look at my phone, it said like 50,000 messages. Like I was that person. And now I am reformed and I am inbox zero. Like that's the team I'm on. And let me tell you, if you're suffering with email overwhelm, that inbox zero is like, you know, it'll change your life. Uh, how is that even possible? Right. <laughs> what? I know. Um, so, okay. So when it comes to email, like give us one tip from the Jill Floodstrom playbook of how do you, I don't know if this is a word, decomplicate, de simplify. Let's go simplify. Yeah. How do you simplify email? Like how do you make progress towards this concept of zero inbox? Well, I think the main thing is using templated responses. That is huge because when you think about, you know, all the emails that you get in every day, you might be typing the exact same words all the time, a bunch of different people over and over and over again. And when you think about creating a templated response for that, it just makes it so easy to just click one button versus having to type that whole string. And if you're somebody that uses your phone for email, like you're not a desktop or a laptop person, you can use the hotkeys inside your phone to do the same thing. So instead of having to type all that out and use up all that extra time and energy, you just couple keystrokes and you're done. I mean, it's, it's been a huge game changer. Okay. Well, I'm going to sound really uneducated right now. What is a templated response and how do I get one? What is this? Well, depending on what email. Okay. I use office 365. Okay. So mine's probably going to look a little bit different than yours because I am a Gmail person for business. So basically what it is, is you just go into your settings and there's different things, very similar to how you set up your signature line in yeah. your email. So it's similar to that. And it's probably in a very similar spot in your settings. So you go in there and you type like, um, Hey, thanks so much for your email. I'll get back to you in a couple hours with it. That's just an easy one. Well, you can create that templated response and then just use certain keys. You know, I usually set them as like weird keystrokes, like X, you know, Y, Z, something like that, that you wouldn't normally type, like don't use HAS or something like that. Cause you type that all the time, but then it just automatically populates it in your email inbox inside that message that you've opened and you just click send and it's gone. And huh. same thing with your phone. There are, if you're an Apple user, it's probably, probably something similar for Android, but for Apple people, you can literally type like just one letter, like Z, and then that response will pop up 
send and off you go. Fascinating. Well, I know what I will be doing when I get off this interview with you. Yes. Uh, okay. So this concept of like templated responses, yeah. um, can you have lots of them? Oh, heck yeah. Okay. You can have lots and lots and lots of them. And so I always encourage people to look through your sent file and see what you're sending to people. Because what you probably don't realize is that you're sending the same thing pretty consistently. And so that's what you can use to turn into a templated response. Mm. And it just makes it so much easier. So that way you're not sitting at your computer going, okay, I know I want to do this, but I have no idea what I would use it for. Just mm -hmm. go look through your sense and you'll be able to see it. That's great. So what's one thing that you use it for to give us some context? I use it. I mean, I use it for a response to a general email. Like let's say I'm in the car or I'm traveling and I really want this person to know that I received their email and that I'm aware of it. I'll send a templated response for that. That's probably the easiest, but mm -hmm. a lot of times for specific business, like for health insurance, like we're sending the same response that says, Hey, I would love to help you with that. Here's my scheduling link schedule an appointment when it's a great time for you. That's a templated response. I don't need to type that out every time, just right. strokes and off I go. Mm. Yeah, that's huge. Like little things of like even using it internally. Like if you have team members of, hey, everyone's like, hey, can I get to this? It's like, hey, here's my calendar link. Instead of having to type that up or try to coordinate. Uh, but that's the thing that I love too about uh, working and talking with other entrepreneurs. There's these little hacks right? It's all these like little things. It's nothing monstrumental, uh, which I also don't know if that's a word, but it's like just it enough, <laughs> making up words today. It's just enough to like free up a little bit of that mental space of going, it's one less thing that I have to like type out, think about and get to. I um, mean, it also probably makes it easier to respond quicker of like, you know, just like template response, go template response, go. Well, and I always tell people too, like when we sit down and we talk about, you know, we have this massive project that we want to do and we, a lot of us don't have a full half a day or two hours to carve out, to dedicate to just this one thing, but we have two minutes. Mm. And so using those little templated responses, you'll be shocked at how much time you get back into your schedule. And it's like anything, you know, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you do, you will be to the point where I'm like, I can't live without it. Like I'm sending templated responses all the time. Oh, that's so true. Because it's like, how many times are we just trying to like, like we're in Starbucks line or we're sitting at a red light, definitely not driving, right? Safety first, okay. but maybe yes. sitting at the red light going out two minutes. And it's like, you can maybe get through three or four things versus one thing, just trying to type this out. I love that. I love those little hacks. Uh, I love, I love everything about just trying to be more efficient and, this is also a part of your personal brand, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like in addition to your insurance business and your real estate business and everything else you have going on, it was really this passion for efficiencies and little tips and tricks of the trade uh, that you kind of leaned into your personal brand. So I kind of want to know as a small business owner, as an entrepreneur, it's like, what was that trigger point for you of going, I have a lot going on. I'm managing a lot. I'm growing and leading multiple companies. Like this isn't necessarily something you had to do. You wanted to do it. So why make the choice to lean in to building your personal brand as a small business owner? Well, you know, it kind of started as something that kind of surprised me to be honest, because I thought everybody was doing it. Like, I think we just kind of get into our own zones and we don't realize that not everybody is doing the same things. So I would go to these events and I would talk about these random things that I do and people would be like, why are you keeping that to yourself? Like, you need to tell people about that. People need to know because everybody needs more time, right? I mean, that's the one thing that we cannot get back. And so I just kind of was like, what? Like people really don't know that. And so when I started talking about the email organization or like how to categorize your to-do list or all these different things, people were just like, say what? Mm -hmm. I, I've never heard of that before. So it was kind of that, but also knowing that with the way that things are changing in the financial services world and the health insurance world and the government becoming more involved in that, I really yeah. like the idea of being able to control more of the business mm. than giving that to someone else to control. And so it just kind of was this 
Mary of two things that I loved. You know, all these are random things that I do every day. I thought everybody did. And then also creating this business around it because I think as we, as entrepreneurs, when we stick together and we help each other, it is like the growth of that is just massive. And so if I can help other people with these little random things, I feel like it can really, really change their life. Oh, I love that so much. And that's so true. It's like, Every really great business idea truly should stem from this could really help someone else. So really as an entrepreneur, a small business owner, it's like you were at these events with other small business owners and they're like, Hey, why are you keeping all these secrets to yourself? Totally. Like, how do we like build this? And so you really started building your personal brand to help people just like you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Because I think you get to a certain point in your business where if you don't control it, it will start to control you. Mm -hmm. And you've got to kind of like take the reins and be like, okay, I don't have all this mass amount of time, but I do have two minutes. I have 30 seconds. I have these random little pockets of time that I can be doing things. So that way at the end of the day, I can actually go be with my family mm -hmm. and not be working until midnight or three o'clock in the morning. Like so many of us do really capturing back that family time, which I think is so important and sometimes kind of gets lost when you become an entrepreneur because you're so focused on building this business and getting clients and earning money and doing all the things that that stuff kind of gets pushed to the side but i think we need to bring that back because there's nothing more important than our families preach i'm all about that message yeah um it's like if we had a happier home life we would naturally have a happier work life all Absolutely. all of us mm -hmm. um okay so about three years ago, then you started leaning in and building your personal brand, which is how I got to be connected with you and uh, this a beautiful relationship with Brand Builders Group and you started to emerge. And so I'm so super curious uh, and for everyone listening, what has this process been like for you as a small business owner of going, all right, I'm going to lean in and do this thing that I feel really called to do because unlike many of our clients who are building their personal brands for their actual businesses, yours is a little bit of a delineation from that. And it's like, this is naturally having positive byproduct, but it's almost like a whole new business. And so you've really built out this entire like productivity for entrepreneurs and small businesses owners course, which does and doesn't necessarily connect to your other businesses. So I would love to hear your journey about it's ultimately creating a new business, but why did you go the course route and how has this process been for you as both the face of your business and also this kind of like growing personal brand? I think the main thing is that this started many years before I even had found brand builders because it was something that I knew that I wanted to do, but it's like, where do you start? And so I know, I mean, because my whole high school career, I loved sports. And you know, in sports, you always have a coach, someone who's pushing you, someone who's making you better, someone who's guiding you. And I really found that when you have an idea, but you don't really know what else is around that idea, you know, I can build a business. That's not a problem. But when you take this idea, this little tiny baby, and you're like, how do I make this grow? Like, what could this become? I really think that the course route and having the coaching is huge. And I always tell people that there's no way that we could have created what we've created without brand builders, because there's so many people that I meet throughout this journey that are like, Hey, I've already got this book. I've already got this thing. And I really came here with just an idea. And like a calling and like, I know that I can make a difference in someone's life. I don't really know how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to figure it out and you guys are going to help me. So it was just really this journey that looking back, it's like, holy smokes, we've accomplished a lot <laughs> in the last couple of years. It's kind of crazy when you look back, but I think the, the main thing that I want to tell everyone listening is that if you have an idea do not give up on that idea. Find the person that supports you. Find whatever you need to make that idea a reality because you don't want to let those ideas just sit in a notebook or stay on the shelf. You've got to get them out there because they really, truly 
can change other entrepreneurs' lives. Oh, that's such wisdom from your mouth right now. It's so good. I think one of the things I love about that, and we'll just stay here for just a second, is it's like, if the idea is in you, there's a reason, right? right. Whether you see a need or you feel the need or it's a need that's finally been fulfilled for you or it's something you see people around you struggling with. And like I would even say like today, it's like in our short conversation already, it's like templated responses. Like I already know like three different ways of like, this could really help me. It's like may not change every part about my business, but I don't need a hundred new ideas. I need a couple that just help me move a little faster. And I think it's such a great reminder to all of us. It's like, if that idea has been placed on your heart, if you feel like you have this calling, like it's for a reason. It's like somebody out there needs it. They need you, but they also need you to step out of this place of fear or uncertainty and go, I'm gonna take a leap, a leap of faith and we're gonna see what happens. Absolutely. All right, so it's tell us a little bit more. Start too. Oh, definitely the scariest part. Uh, it's Into the Unknown, my favorite song from Frozen. Um, it's like all the things, right? So I want to know more about like what you've been working on um, when it comes to this personal brand of yours. And uh, a huge part of it is I know that you are launching a new course, right? It's a huge part. Of, we're so excited to get to help you with that. And so it really is a course about helping people get their time back. Right. So we talked a little bit about this email and templated responses, but give us a sneak peek. And then for everyone listening, uh, we're also going to include um, a link in the show notes of where you can go and get uh, Jill's free productivity guide for entrepreneurs. Um, in fact, I'll go ahead and um, give you like a little sneak uh, peek of where you can go to get that. And you will go to scale, uh, scale your small business dot org forward slash clear right? We'll also put that in the show notes. Uh, that's a really awesome place to go get this free guide that Jill has teed up for everyone listening today. But um, all right, Jill, so in this course of building this out, like there's a whole process to figuring out, like, how do I take all of this knowledge and all of these things that I've been doing and also what I think would actually help someone else and put that together in a way that other people can digest it. So if you were to tell everyone listening, here are the three things that you are going to come away with in this course. And like, here's why uh, people need help with productivity. They need help with becoming more efficient or just doing less. Like, what would those three things be? I think the main thing is we divided it up into nine pillars, but there is so much in each one. But I think the most important thing that makes this course different is that each one is short and sweet. So you literally can take what we talk about and go do it. Very similar to how my podcast is and the fact that it's like these short actionable things that you can do right away. So we'll start off with what's in the productivity guide is about your to-do list. The different steps that I go through that's different from what other people do and just even organizing your to-do list, focusing on certain things, getting those knocked out first so they don't turn into the big, ugly, scary monsters and just working through that list every single day. But there's stuff in there from working with your team. How do you organize your organization? <laughs> Bills in your organization. like. All sort like it runs the gamut because there's so many things that I have learned from running all these businesses and of course feedback from other business owners that I've helped. But I mean, there's a calendar in there that just talks about what to do on the 10th, the 25th, once a year, once a quarter. And I feel like that has been a huge help for people because when you've got a checklist, just print it out, you pin it up on your board and you're just like, oh, that's the day. Got to get that done today. Just oh, that's so good. So I have, I have three questions um, about that and kind of like back to these three things that you should do. So I think you said a couple of things there. I'm going to like tee in of like knowing you and knowing your content, like three things. So the first one is this to-do list. Yes. So if you were to say, if I was just going to give you one tip right now to everyone listening of like, here's one thing you should do to better maximize your to-do list or however it is that you would say, it's like, what's the one thing on the to-do list that we need to know? Definitely do the stuff that makes you money first. Mm. I think sometimes we get lost in the busyness and the easy stuff, but really you've got to make sure that stuff that has a firm date deadline and the stuff that makes you money has to get done first. 
But sometimes that's the stuff that we procrastinate the most. So that's huge. Do those mm. things first. So do the things that make you money first. Everything else is second to that. Mm -hmm. Short, sweet, but that's super helpful. Just being able to look at every single thing that you have to do on a day and a week and a month and go, which ones of these things actually co correlate to dollars and cents? Absolutely. Do that first. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Super, super tangible. And again, it's just a, a mental processing of when there's so much to do, where do I start? We start with what makes you money. Mm -hmm. mm, that's good. Um, okay. Now you mentioned something else that I laughed out loud about organizing your organization. What, what is that? So that is, you know, a lot of people are still like a sole proprietor and it's like, should you be something else? Should you be a different entity? What, what should you even be? So we go over a little bit of that. And I also talk about, you've got to create your team of people. You've got to get your accountant. You've got to get your attorney. You've got to get these people because you're going to be talking with them a lot. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what we don't know. So you need a good team of people to protect you because you're going to make some mistakes and they can prevent you from making some costly ones. Oh yeah. So it's just like making sure it doesn't matter if you're a, a one person show or you have a team of a hundred. It's like, like these are all the people that touch all the parts. It's my attorney. It's my financial person. It's my CPA. It's, you know, whatever, right. We're walking through it. Okay. So it's getting everything organized in a way and placed in a place where it's like, this is who I go to for what. Exactly. Okay. Yep. And knowing who those, who those people are, what roles do they fill? Okay. That's awesome. But yeah, and I think that's really good. It's like, that also helps you uncover any gaps. Absolutely. Yeah. Like as an entrepreneur, um, I'm a part of EO, the entrepreneurs organization here in Nashville. And I still find it so amazing how I'll be in like these small group discussions with other entrepreneurs and people don't have an actual attorney. Like people don't have a formalized tax person and they have multi seven figure businesses and they're still kind of just winging it. Um, I'm, I personally am way too OCD for that. So, um, but it, it is amazing to me. It's like, for so many of us, it's like, we've been successful in spite of ourselves. And there's a certain point where it's like, okay, I actually have to create some formality to what I'm doing in case of X, Y, and Z. So organizing your organization, making sure you've got the right people in place to take care of the things when and if needed. Okay. Second, oh. awesome thing. Okay. Third thing, and I'm just like super curious about is you talk a lot about email in terms of time-saving tips. Other than email, what do you think is the other next biggest thing that people need to work on who are entrepreneurs, our small business owners to get their life back in check? Well, I think the most important thing is finding some sort of software to keep track of everything because mm -hmm. We, a lot of us keep so much stuff in our head and then we wonder why we're so stressed out, why we forget things, why people are like, you're never listening to me. And so being able to put all that stuff somewhere, whether that's a calendar, you know, some sort of, you know, Kanban board, whatever that looks like for you, having a holding place where you can put all those ideas so that way, you know, when you're ready to come back to them, you haven't forgotten them. And I think it's something, there's so many things that are just, it's simple. And you're like, that can't work because it's so simple, but <laughs> that's what does work. Do you have some favorite softwares? I do. I do. Okay. I love Asana, but I'm testing out a new one that is called ClickUp and I'm very intrigued. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of looking at it, dabbling a bit to see if it's a better match to, you know, bring all these things, you know, and all of our team together to see if it's a better fit. Okay. So Asana is the one that you've been using, but well, you're kind of like testing with ClickUp. Would you yeah. say that ClickUp would be like super comparable to Asana? It's very similar, but there's different things about it, which I think kind of make it even cooler is that you can import like all this stuff. Like I'm always on the hunt for like, what's a hub that my team can use where everything comes into that and goes out of it. Mm. And I think that that software might be it now. It might not once we, you know, get into it and see, but I'm always on the hunt to see, you know, what, 
people are creating. I mean, it is fascinating what people are coming up with. I agree. So I'm excited to test it out and see if it works for us. That's awesome. Uh, we use at Brand Builders Group internally, we use Monday.com. Yes. And very similar. Yeah. So super similar, but we integrated Monday.com into our daily operations maybe a year and some change ago. It has revolutionized our lives. It's like literally like we've run every single meeting now off of our Monday boards. It's and awesome. it's like, but it's to that point, it's like, it's like even we a year and a half ago as a multi seven figure business, we're running all of our project management out of email. I know it's, and there's so many crazy that too. It's crazy, crazy, bad, not crazy, good. Yeah. Um, and so we totally shifted everything to, the goal of 2021 for us was get organized, right? As an entity. And it took a whole year to get everyone reacclimated, situated, getting all the boards loaded. But now I literally look at these and I'm like, how are we functioning? Like, like how are we actually functioning as a company? Uh, even as me for an individual, uh, like, I, like one of the things that I do is I have um, Monday boards with my EA. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have visibility into what she's doing instead of saying, Hey, Maggie, what are you doing today? Hey, Maggie, what are you doing today? It's like, go look for yourself on the Monday board. So, so much of that is about creating transparency and work activity and communication. So, all right, well, I'm super uh, interested to hear what you find with ClickUp. So make a personal note um, to let me know what you find with ClickUp. So, um, all right, well, I know we just have a couple of more minutes here together. And so I'm curious with just uh, one or two other quick things for our listeners that I think would be so super cool. And again, as a reminder to everyone, um, Jill's offered up this really cool free guide. Go to scaleyoursmallbusiness.org uh, forward slash clear. We'll put that in the show notes. Uh, her course goes live on April 7th, April 7th, April 7th uh, which is just a few days uh, from the launch of this episode. So uh, you can learn more about that too at scaleyoursmallbusiness.org. Um, you can check that out if you're so inclined. Um, but okay, so as we kind of wrap up here, Jill, so I'm really curious for the everyday small business owner and entrepreneur who does not think they need a personal brand. What's your thoughts on that? Well, you probably already are. You just don't realize it. And so you've really got to shift your perspective and realize that you are and everything that you're doing or not doing is affecting your reputation even though you don't realize it mm -hmm. and so really getting a handle on that whole idea will shift the way that you do things the way that you respond to things and making sure that you really have all your stuff organized and together because if you're a disorganized mess people know it they can see it <laughs> That's Even scary. though you don't realize they can. <laughs> but you know, it's so funny. It's like to that for the person who's going like, I don't need a personal brand. You're saying, no, you already have one. You already are a personal brand. Um, and if you're a disorganized mess, maybe that is your brand. So, right. And you probably want to change it. You should want to change it for don't sure. Don't let that be your brand. Yeah. Um, but I think that's a great point. I know that was a huge part of our conversations of, uh, it's not whether or not you need one. It's like, no, you already have one. It's just, are you the one creating it? Or is it uh, being created for you by other people's perceptions? Absolutely. Um, that's good. All right. Last question of the day um, for you. And this is uh, back to this like concept of entrepreneurship and running and scaling small businesses. So it, this, is, this does not have to do with productivity or time management or anything, but if you were to give just one piece of advice from all the businesses that you've started, scaled, sold, dismantled, like what would you say is the number one lesson that you have learned that you will carry forward into the future when it comes to being an entrepreneur? Hire before you're ready. Oh, that's good. So tell, tell me more about that. So a lot of times when I visit with people, they're like, oh, I don't have the money. Oh, I'm not ready. And I think by hiring someone that really pushes you forward and you, it takes a lot of things off your plate and allows you to really focus on your business. But for so many people, it's just something that they're like, oh, I can do it all myself. I got it. I got it. But you don't got it. 
And by having someone, bringing someone in which which has a fr- fresh perspective on your business, the way that you're doing things, and by using software or, you know, whatever it is to empower them, your business can grow exponentially. But a lot of times, like most things, you got to do it before you're ready. Oh my gosh. Have you been talking to my husband? <laughs> I feel like that, that was planted in this conversation. Yeah. We literally had this talk last night, um, uh, advice heard, uh, if not for anyone else, for me, I hear you, uh, I'm with you. Jill, thank you so much uh, for being on the show. I'm so excited for this episode to go live. Um, if you guys, uh, if once you check this out, go get her free guide, go check out her course. Also check out the recap episode. That'll be just sharing my top points and highlights from this. Uh, Jill, so honored to have you in my life. So happy you're on the show. Thank you so much. And to everyone else, uh, we will catch you next time on the Influential Personal Brand.